So, we're finally at the end of Shooty Gatwa's first series of Doctor Who, and I asked the question, was it worth the wait? Well, let's find out! First of all, it was great that RTD addressed a question I had last week about newer viewers not knowing who Sutek was by having a truncated version of Pyramids of Mars in Tales of the TARDIS. Although I was sad to see they cut my favourite line superstitious savage and they changed this piece of music from this to this. Series finales in any series are difficult ones to get right. One of my favourite seasons was season 3, and it had what I felt was a slightly lacklustre ending after such an incredible build-up with some of the best episodes of New Who. How did this series finale fare? First of all, I enjoyed the callbacks to previous episodes, particularly 73 Yards. The distance of the perception filter and how Ruby's alternative timeline helped to save the day as she has a foggy memory of her adventure. It was definitely worth watching the Pyramids of Mars version of Tales of the TARDIS because it gave us an explanation of the memory TARDIS and how it makes Tales of the TARDIS series more relevant and saved in exposition. Although, from watching Tales of the TARDIS to Empire of Death, wasn't it a little strange to not have Mel in Tales of the TARDIS? I love her so much. Speaking of exposition, my, wasn't there a lot of it? At first, I was happy with the energy of the story being taken down a notch as too much action can be a lot to take in. In the play Once in a Lifetime by George S. Kaufman and Moss Hart, there was a hilarious scene that ended up being cut for a karma scene where two characters simply talk on a train carriage. His producer, Sam Harris, said, It's a noisy play, kid. One of the noisiest plays I've ever been around. Except for these two minutes at the beginning of the first act, there isn't another spot on this whole play where two people sit down and talk quietly to each other. It's a tiring play to sit through, kid. The whole story is worth reading from the excellent biography Act 1 by Moss Hart. However, as much as this was at first a welcome relief, I felt the story revolved around the exposition too much. For all of the Disney budget, did I really need to watch three people sitting around explaining the plot? Especially for such a monumental consequences. Also, did anyone ever get that sort of Disney influence here? You know, there always seems to be this massive threat to the entire universe. I mean, just take Loki and Avengers Infinity War as examples, right down to the characters being snapped out of existence. A highlight for me again was Mel. I know the girl boss character has come under a lot of flack recently in other shows, but she hit the ground running here. Girl boss engaged. Girl boss activated. Except fight. And wasn't it beautiful when she looked at the sixth doctor's coat and her memories came flooding back without a word being spoken? Oh god, I love her so much! Oh. It was sad to see Millie Gibson go, who for me was the highlight of the entire series. She also hit the ground running as well and she showed an acting ability and range well beyond her years. I could see her going on to bigger and better things and the way she was written out was actually really beautiful but on a selfish way I'd like to have her back for like another series. Although her long goodbye was like very reminiscent of like David Tennant's goodbye and it, but it also made me feel that the final episode's plot was possibly a little thin on the ground. Again it felt like RTD had kind of written himself into a corner with this fantastic build up of last week. I don't want to go. So taking the action down and having Ruby's mum just being ordinary was better than trying to have an explosive reveal that could only have been a letdown. So in a way the build up was the exciting part not the reveal. My biggest disappointment was when the Doctor talked about all the planets coming back and I was waiting. Clom. 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 Yes. Clom. Clom's gone. Who want Clom? I wanted Clom. In fact, I personally think they missed a trick there. Shame on you, RTD. I spit on them. I was also a little confused about the kind woman. I mean, who was the baby? Uh, why did he need metal? I mean, I assume it's going to get resolved in future episodes, but there seemed to be a big build-up about it. You know, I found it just a little odd. It felt like just a bit flat. Is it Susan? But we've been down that track too many times already, haven't we? Oh, and I don't want to mention this. Stop crying. Stop crying. 
<laughs> or this. Yeah, I never understood what was all that Egyptian stuff. Cultural appropriation. Yeah, give us a break, doctor. Am I sorry that I didn't go to the cinema? No. Don't get me wrong, I would like to have seen uh, Millie Gibson's message. And I just want to say a big thank you for you all coming out so late on a Friday night. But there was an expectation that it was going to be big fun and gung-ho like the giggle, but... It wasn't. I don't know about you, but I'm a bit confused about Mrs. Flood. I mean, is she evil? Was she taken over by Sutek? He's just faking being nice so she can do an E17 impersonation on the roof? And then she tells us that... I'm sorry to say his story ends in absolute terror. Another universal all-time shattering event. And that brings me back to my question. Was it worth waiting for? Kind of. I mean, I enjoyed it, but it was a little underwhelming. You know, basically everyone comes back to life and everyone's okay. I mean, even in Avengers, you know, Infinity War and Endgame, there was a payoff that the people who disappeared were gone for five years and the survivors had to cope with that. We've also had so many of these huge, far-reaching events across time and space that they're starting to lose their impact. Um, I recently reflected on the William Hartnell story, The Massacre. I was lucky enough to see Ian Levine's AI reconstruction and the ending is just quiet, tragic and blunt. No huge world-shattering events, no super-powered aliens. When the Doctor and Stephen talk at the end, there's no exposition. There's no pulling out something at the last minute to save the day. Just two people pondering over the ethics of their actions and inactions. Their silences are deafening. Just comparing the somber ending of the massacre with the big CGI spectacle of one of the most formidable beings ever in Who history being defeated with a dog collar. I know which I found more powerful. Do you agree or disagree? Please leave your comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm going to be back soon. I'm going to place the episodes from this season from worst to best. How would you list the episodes? I'd love you to leave your lists in the comments and I'll try and get through to the next video and see if ours compare. <laughs>